This video starts with the data grouping UI available in the DevExpress WinForms grid by default. It then shows you how to apply the data grouping at design time and goes on to cover related options, such as using predefined value ranges to group data, anchoring group rows to the top of the view when scrolling large data groups, changing group row paint style, automatically expanding group rows, and disabling end user data grouping. Finally, the video will guide you through the basic API you can use to group data in code. To group data by a particular column, end users can drag a header from the column header panel onto the group panel. The grid control automatically sorts data groups in ascending order. To reverse the sort order, click the column header. To expand a group row and thus access its child data rows, double click anywhere on the group row or click the rows expand button. One more way to group data is by selecting the Group by This Column item from the Column Header Context menu. With two or more columns in the Group panel, rows will form a hierarchy according to grouping column values. You can drag a column header to another position within the Group panel. To ungroup data, drag a column header from the Group panel to the Column Header panel or right-click a column header and select Ungroup from the context menu. To remove all grouping, right-click the group panel and select Clear Grouping. At design time, you can use the same drag-and-drop operations and context menus. Besides that, you can use a column's group index property. Set this property to a non-negative integer value which specifies the grouping level. Let's set it to 0 for the received column and to 1 for the red column. As a result, the received column is at the root grouping level, the red column is at the second level. Let's run the application and try expanding and collapsing rows to see the logic behind data row grouping. By default, data groups contain identical values, but the grid also allows you to group ranges of values together. This can be easily demonstrated with date time columns. Open the properties grid displaying the received column settings and set the group interval property to date range. As a result, the grid's rows are combined into date ranges including today, yesterday, last week, and so on. Now let's review the options that affect the grid's behavior regarding data grouping. By default, grouping column values are only displayed within group rows, and the columns are not shown within the view. If you need to display them, expand the grid view's options view property and enable the show grouped columns option. You'll see that the grouping column now stays within the view. The View's Group Draw Mode property specifies the paint style for group rows. Let's change this property value. The paint style typically affects the height of group rows and indents of data groups. Now let's expand the View's Options Behavior property and enable the Allow Fixed Groups option. When scrolling through group data, the top group row is anchored to the top of the grid and is always displayed. A special glyph indicates that you've already scrolled past a part of rows in this group. Data groups are usually collapsed after grouping operations. To automatically expand all the group rows, set the Auto Expand All Groups property to true and see how all data rows become visible if you change grouping. The grid control allows you to prevent end users from changing the grouping conditions already applied to the grid. Set a column's allow group property to false to prevent end users from grouping against this column. To do the same for all columns within a view, disable the view's allow group property. In addition, you can hide the group panel using the view's show group panel property. Now let's see how to group grid data in code. Note that this works regardless of the view's allow group and the columns allow group options. I already have the group data button here in my ribbon. Let's group data by the received and read columns in the button's click event handler. First, obtain the corresponding two grid column objects. Clear existing group settings by calling the view's clear grouping method. Then, use the group index property to set required grouping levels. Note that the grid control will resort its data after each statement three times in our example. 
To prevent excessive updates, use the begin sort and end sort methods. In this case, the grid view will be updated only once. Let's run the application and click the Group Data button. As a result, grid data is grouped by the received and read columns. Return to code and comment out the part that groups grid data. Another way to apply grouping to grid columns is using the view's sort info collection. Let's call the clear and add range method to clear existing sorting grouping settings and then sort and group data as needed. Pass an array of two grid column sort info elements as the first parameter of the method. These elements apply sorting to the received and read columns in ascending order. Pass two as a second parameter, thus indicating that data grouping, not sorting, needs to be applied. The method updates the view only once, so you don't need to use the begin sort and end sort methods. Now, run the application again and click the Group Data button. The ribbon also contains the Expand All Group and Collapse All Group buttons. To expand all group rows in the first button's click event handler, use the View's Expand All Groups method. Similarly, click the Click Event Handler for the Collapse All Group button with the Collapse All Group method call. Now run the application one last time and group data by clicking the Group Data button. When I click the Expand All Groups button, all data rows become visible. To collapse group rows, click the Collapse All Groups button.